And in the Thank past you. few days alone, we've seen the arrest of a suspect plotting to attack churches to kill Christians and ISIS mass murdering other Christians. It is a fact. Christians are being targeted. The question, though, is will any world leader step up, lead the world, and stop these savages? Former Congressman Alan West joins us. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Greta. Um, well, I mean, first of all, do you agree that Christians are under attack? Um, well, absolutely. The facts speak for itself. And you, you forget that this past weekend that you had some uh, African Christians who were praying in the dinghy uh, that in the Mediterranean and it started to sink. And, of course, the uh, the Muslims that were on there said, uh, we don't pray to God, we pray to Allah. And they threw them off into the sea and they drowned them. Look, the thing that we have to come to understand, the difference between World War II and today, the atrocities of Nazi Germany and even Imperial Japan, you know, we know these things almost in real time now. When and Americans can open up a video and they can see the beheadings of Ethiopian Christians, Coptic Christians. They can see the desecration of, uh, you know, Christian sites and people being driven from their homes. But yet the, the world so, is doing nothing. So why, why is the world doing nothing? Why isn't President Obama mean with Angela Merkel of Germany well, and Prime Minister David Cameron of England? I mean, I mean this, is, this is growing. We can put a map up there and we see all, more and more every day. First of all, at the National Prayer Breakfast, the president told the Christians to get off their high horse and try to have this moral equivalency statement saying that we were guilty of like-minded things during the Crusades, but he forgot to tell the whole part of the history, and that in 1095, Pope Urban II called for the Crusades because Christians were being attacked by Muslims but, but, during their pilgrimage. But even, I mean, I, mean, even, I, I recognize it, and I know that many Christians are, were upset by the fact that the president said that, and I understand, and I but, get but it. I'm and just I, talking about why I, he won't stand up. I don't get I, it. I don't I, understand. And I don't disagree that that was, you know, uh, you know that, that was a terrible thing for him to say, not mention the fact, because there's a huge huge time gap we're talking about right now. But why aren't, why aren't the world leaders getting together because, and doing something about this? Because there's a recalcitrance, there's a reticence. We are con constantly being told that we must be tolerant, we must not offend anyone, when yet you continue to see an enemy that has been the, the historic history uh, enemy of Christians since about 628 A.D., and they continue on this march, and we won't stand up so, to them. But what will it take? I mean, every single day I wake up and see the video that Catherine Herridge is talking about, about Christians being behind headed or shot or I mean, I mean I mean just every single day I mean aren't they appalled I mean wouldn't you think that someone would want to sort of stand up and show the take, leadership it will take leaders that are not into political correctness it will take leaders that have the courage and the resolve to first and foremost say that we do have something that is based upon religion we do have something that is you know heinous and barbaric and savage and it must be stopped I think the only way that's even going to happen is if Christians around the world and others who, will, who cannot stand this atrocity will march on the capitals in a peaceful way, capitals of all the, all the nations, and make a statement that th they want their leaders to stop this. And I believe that is coming. I believe that you're starting to see more pastors and ministers speak up. But again, we have to have the right type of leadership in Western civilization. Colonel West, nice to see you, sir. Thank you. And straight ahead.